Okay, everybody, we're going to get started here now. So thank you for joining us, and special thanks to uh, both Steve and uh, Gene Hansen at the janitorial store for, uh, for organizing this. Certainly look forward to kind of presenting some content for you. I've got a few things that I'm looking forward to share. Um, we've got a number of people on here, so just uh, want to thank everyone for taking time out of their busy day. Uh, Carl, Stephen, Richard, Gene, thanks for showing up. A um, couple of others in here, Bert, TJ, appreciate you making the time to come out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start getting into the content here. Uh, I was just going to minimize this screen. Feel free to ask questions as we go through this. Um, I probably won't see them until certain parts of the presentation, but if you've got a question, use the console the control panel there. Uh, there's a question section, and by all means, feel free to, uh, to take a run at that, and uh, we'll address them as we go forward. So. Without much further delay, my name is Toby. Again, I'm the sales manager here at SWEPT, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the janitorial business that we started a number of years ago and how technology redefined our company. Um, so I'm going to share some insights about the technology that we used and why it matters to you, your small business, and your customers and your cleaners. So let's get into this. So couple of insights that we're going to talk about today um, that kind of set the stage for the presentation. It's obviously the basis of the content, so I'm really excited to share the insights that we had as a janitorial company that changed our business. I've got an overview of the SWEPT technology that obviously is the, the end result of the insights that we had. Um, I've got a couple of takeaways and material that I think every one of you should find some value in, um, certainly free to, free to use and at your disclosure. And what would a webinar be without some limited time off or at the end of it? That, uh, so if you stay to the end of the presentation, we have a couple of th things of value um, in terms of an offer that I'm really excited to present to you uh, on behalf of both Steve and Jean, who, who wanted to make sure that uh, their membership got some significant value out of this presentation. So beyond the content that we're going to share, there are some monetary pieces at the end of this that you can capitalize on as well. So let's roll. So, my name again, Toby Keeping, and I'm here to share with you the two insights that we had as a janitorial business that helped us grow by over 500% in a year of, uh, of our business. And in that year, we won over 86% of our bids um, that changed our business, uh, but also changed fundamentally our business model. So again, while the insights that I want to share with you are the foundation for the, for the business that we've become a technology provider, uh, we do believe that the insights I'm going to share with you today can be utilized in the absence of our tools. So there are certainly values that we think you're going to get out of this presentation that we're excited to share. So the first insight is that you're most likely underestimating the benefits that your team can bring to your business. And again, we'll talk about each of these. So much so, in fact, that you're probably taking steps to prevent these benefits from occurring in the first place. The second one is that the customer is changing. And what we found in these two insights is that they're both connected and that we found a way to actually leverage them together to benefit our business, which we think you can do the same. So let's start at the beginning as a bit of an introduction. We began our company about three and a half, four years ago. Um, we decided to build a janitorial company with technology at the root of it. Um, one of the founders comes to this company with a significant amount of uh, technology and uh, digital marketing experience. So we've envisioned that that technology at the root of our business would allow us two things, uh, operational efficiency and effectiveness, but also a unique way to sell our services in the marketplace uh, that we currently reside in. And what I'll do is I will talk a little bit about that um, towards the end of the presentation. Um, but certainly it was really exciting. But what happened is that we grew by uh, a pretty significant amount in one year and it became the catalyst for us to, instead of being a janitorial company, become a technology company. And what was interesting for us is we evolved from residential into commercial and from one city and into three um, was that we were winning contracts against competitors that frankly we had no business winning. Um, they were bigger. They had been around longer. They should have had more processes in place. Um, but what we found was that in winning business from them 
and then them asking to purchase the software and system that we had provide, built for ourselves, we still stepped back and decided, hey, maybe we're on to something here. And instead of being a bigger, better janitorial company, we decided to be a technology company instead. So that is our evolution, and I'm excited to kind of share it with you. And I'm hoping that the insights, again, and we've got something here that will provide a value to you. So the first insight is that the cleaners that you have on staff can provide more value to you beyond just the tasks of cleaning. So in our scenario, we believe that the cleaners were significantly more valuable than the brooms that they pushed. We just needed a way to try and extrapolate that value from them, and we found something that turned to be quite unique for us. So for us, everything began when one of our customers expressed interest in having a higher degree of communication and direct access with our cleaner. And certainly that's not the, the norm for every business, but in the early days that was fine for us. So what we did, he wanted to have more communication. So what we did rather than investing in technology, uh, or sorry, in a, in a kind of off the shelf system and going and buying something, we simply developed some SMS message routing process that alerted the manager, our management team, as well as the customer when a cleaner was on site. So we did some automatic routing. It was really simple, really rudimentary, but it kind of was the first piece of the solution that we built that we got really, really positive feedback. So the customer came into our office and we talked to him at one point and he, he shared, listen, this was great, guys. I, I was out, he runs a restaurant, by the way. I was out with my friends after closing the restaurant and you know I got the text message that the cleaner was on site and me and my guys were talking about this cleaning crew because all of his friends own restaurants as well. So it became, we were shocked that that very simple interface resonated so much with him. Um, so it was really intriguing that they were spending that amount of time talking about their cleaner. But the ability for a cleaner to post messages about the location while he or she was on site was the spark that took us to a completely different level and we believe was kind of the, the next iteration that kind of drove us to become a technology company. So for those of you who have kids um, and you ask them, you know, the end of the day when you sit down for, for that family meal and you ask, you know, so guys, how was your day today? And, you know, you get that, that sullen look and they shrug their shoulders and they kind of look at you with a smirky smile and say, it was okay. Well, I get that every day from my two youngsters. Well, that was largely what we got from our cleaners when we inquired, how were they doing? Whether it was because they didn't want to communicate with us because we were the boss or there were language barriers or just they weren't having a great day and they really didn't want to tell anyone that they weren't having a great day because they feared for their job. That was the feedback that we got and it was really hard as we grew our business to continually feel like we had the pulse and the situational awareness of what was taking place within our business, both within our team, but also on site for our customer. So it was a real challenge for us. And what we found is that when we gave them a utility that they could communicate with us, um, they did it with kind of a lot more insight than we ever expected. Supply requests, issues on site, you name it. So we were quite shocked. And that was kind of the, the iteration that took us to the next level. And so it shouldn't really be surprising, um, you know, given that, you know, 65% of Americans have a smartphone, which is almost double what it was even five to six years ago. Um, you know, the adoption of this kind of technology is profound and prolific. Um, and certainly I hear that not everyone on a janitorial team has a smartphone, um, but it's surprising even to me how many teams I do speak with uh, when they do adopt the system they find out that more of their cleaners have smartphones than they envisioned. But certainly it's never 100%. But what's interesting that we found was that not only did 65% of Americans have a smartphone, not just a flip phone, but that nearly 19% of who would be called low-income earners, they have a smartphone and they use it for things they're completely dependent on. So they use the phone for things that, you know, more affluent uh, communities don't. They actually post, they look for jobs, they search for jobs, they apply for jobs. It is their only source of connectivity to the internet. So for those people, it's a really, really, really important asset in their life. It's not a luxury item for them. It is how they 
they communicate via the internet. So kind of the epiphany that we had was that we, we had uh, a need to better communicate with our team we felt lacking. We had a need to understand what was taking place at our customers. We didn't feel we could truly see that without going to every customer every day. And we were embroiled with, do we let cleaners take cell phones on site and, and, you know, or not? And what we identified is that you know, at the end of the day, we had an army of employees who had been self-trained in mobile technology. They were consuming vast amounts of data every single day. They were communicating with friends and fr family through a variety of different utilities and programs. Um, and they were doing it on a daily basis. They were totally engaged in their smartphones or phones. And what we identified was that if we wanted to, we had an opportunity to enhance our business by increasing the ability to communicate with our team. Rather than curtailing the use of smartphones, we should be exploiting it. And so that was really the tipping off point for us to a broader adoption or a broader deployment of technology within our cleaner community that then extrapolated up to our management team and all of a sudden we had a cohesive platform that we were all kind of working upon. So regardless, again, regardless of our technology, I think the outcome here is if you can speak more with your cleaners, you're gonna see significant value out of that. How you accomplish that, obviously, it's kind of the center point of our tool. Um, but at its root, why do you want to communicate more with the cleaner? So what we found is that the communications that we established with them provided some benefits in ways that were surprising to us. First, the cleaners loved it. We, not just the technology, they loved being able to communicate in a way that was meaningful to them that they owned, rather than standing in front of the boss and saying, I'm not having a good day and worrying about, you know, is my boss going to care and is he going to fire me? But them having a way that they could share feedback and know that it was permitted and desired by the business made them feel like they were truly part of our organization and not just a replaceable asset that was no more valuable than the broom that they pushed. So for them, it was about having a tool that allowed them to, you know, interface with management. It was allowing them to communicate issues that they saw. It was allowing them to make sure that they knew what they had to do in order to be successful at every location that they went and cleaned. The second thing is that it did is it turned us from reactionary to proactive. So for every one of you on this phone call, you've probably had the misfortune of picking up a phone one morning and it being your customer calling you and you're you know waiting to hear how things are and all of a sudden he or she is telling you that you know your cleaner didn't show up or the back room didn't get done last night why is that and immediately the instinct is you're react you're reactive and the customer right or wrong is left wondering whatever response you give if, is this honest do i trust my vendor or is this just you know misguided faith. Uh, is this a reality or is this a reason? So what we found, for example, one scenario our CEO had was a client called and said we didn't clean the back part of a room. Um, and, and so what happened, of course, he said, well, let me, I got to call my cleaner and find out what happened. Talk to the cleaner. He said, you know, we live north of the, we're in Canada. So, you know, snow and ice is pretty common. So we had, uh, in that particular retail operation that day, there was a lot of melted snow and salt all over the floor. So the cleaner spent, you know, a large complement of his time working in that particular area. And so his critical thinking should have been applauded, which it was, but the challenge was he didn't share that insight with anyone other than himself. And thus, the customer now is at a point where they're questioning, is that true or is that, you know, fiction? So what we were able to do instead is when we built out the tool, which I'm going to show you guys in a little bit, is the ability for a cleaner to proactively share that with you. And then for you, you and the management team, supervisors, to be able to communicate with your customers proactively that morning, you know, 7.30 in the morning, sending a quick note saying, hey, John, we didn't clean the back, back room. Apparently, we, we dealt with a bunch of snow and salt. Uh, I'll look into it a little bit more. I'll call you by lunchtime with the details. We were getting thank yous for not delivering the services that we were contractually obligated to fulfill. So the other thing is that the cleaners found 
that which was an unexpected one. Uh, the cleaners have told us and one of my customers that this was uh, a way that they could get mid-tier accountability on the supervisors. So the best scenario is um, story I can share is I showed our tool to a business owner a couple of months back and you know I showed the messaging piece and how it was all retained and he, he kind of he mused how I wish I had had that a couple of months ago and so I inquired and he went on about to tell that he had lost a contract um, fired the cleaner as a reason for that you know the service wasn't up to snuff so he fired the cleaner and in standing in front of her he expected her to be upset but he was very surprised at her level of uh, visceral distaste if you will that she had for her supervisor and in her words she had told the supervisor about all the service issues that were going on the reasons they were happening what needed to happen for her to be successful at that location and he never did anything with them they were stuck in a text messaging kind of typical communication protocol completely unaccessible to the business owner and he, he kind of he thought to himself and he shared it aloud he goes you know I don't know what's worse I lost the contract I might have lost a really good cleaner I'm not really sure because other than that she was good and I don't know if I have a, a supervisor that's just not pulling his weight so from his vantage point he's got three issues in that one lapse of communication and the other piece that didn't quite make it to the deck here is that we slept so I would imagine each and every one of you on the phone has your phone turned on pretty much 24-7 and that the calls never seem to stop nor do the text messages and you probably have cleaners that are you know what getting messages when they're trying to rest before a shift you know when they get home at five in the morning or three in the morning um, you know those are times when they actually want to turn off and, and, and kind of dial out so what we found is that by having everything in a, in a cohesive system we were able to communicate with the cleaners when they were resting and knew that when they woke up it was it was going to be addressed they would respond and conversely unless there was a major issue whether a cleaner needed to call us in the middle of the night we had a system that allowed them to communicate issues and we'd respond accordingly in the morning and, and with the right resources to bear to make sure that they were able to solve things the next day so that was kind of the piece for us that was was really um, that we found as outcomes of more enhanced communication across our company. So, you know, we profoundly believe that using technology to get previously missed insights from your cleaners gives you an advantage, you know, both in terms of retaining your customers, selling new ones, retaining your cleaners, all of those things kind of dovetail together. So, regardless of how you accomplish it, better communications with your team and I strongly encourage it but also strongly encourage you to find systems that help you with it whether it's protocols of how to route messages or you know, certainly our system but the reality is better ways to communicate among your team will give you some additional advantages The second insight is that the customer is changing and they're doing so pretty prolifically and, and, and quickly so for us what we found was that when we started the business, uh, the type of commercial accounts that we were going into, fairly small again when we started, not everyone was looking for um, a janitorial company that had inspection software. Um, but even in the very short period of time that we grew from a commercial account until we you know, turned into the IT company that we are today, we found that more and more customers were asking us about inspection software and it probably had nothing to do because a lot of the, the competitors we had at the time were fairly small and didn't necessarily have robust systems either but what we believe was that they were actually out researching what should I be able to get from a janitorial company because 86 percent of uh, or sorry almost 90 percent of Americans are available online have internet access they can source this kind of information very quickly and easily and We'll come back to that, but the other piece of it is that you may recognize that not necessarily the business owners just yet, you will see it starting to happen if you haven't already, they're getting younger, as are the people who are influencing the purchase, the people who are doing their homework, the office managers who you're speaking with day in and day out about the services you provide, they're no longer 60 years old, they're 25, they're 30, and they've been connected for a long, long time. Time. so they're getting younger and they're going to make up a bigger part of the workforce over the next five and ten years and the demographic as it grows and assumes more responsibility in the selection of you know solutions like yours you'd better 
better understand what they want and how to meet their needs um, and what influences their buying power. So, you know, just as a quick backdrop, they're known as uh, millennials and they're also known as digital natives. So basically anyone born on or after it's about 1980, which, you know, is, is their, their kids from my vantage point, but regardless. So for them, they've never not been connected. Um, they've existed only in the internet age and for them if they can't find you online you don't exist that's a, that's the reality for them is if they can't identify a digital footprint for you well what kind of trust should they have for you and again you know whether you believe that to be relevant or subjective the frank reality is they are constituting a very significant portion of the workforce coming up in the next five and ten years and and that meeting their needs is going to be important and there's a, a plethora of resources on how to do social and and kind of what to do in terms of managing uh, expectations of Millennials I'll leave it to your fine research capabilities to to dig that information out but let it be known they do rely on the internet as a source of information and referrals so kind of those two pieces kind of um, kind of aligning together, we did a little survey here uh, five or six months ago and what we did is we, we put a Google poll out to 500 business owners within the United States and asked a very simple question, budget aside, when hiring a cleaning company, would their use of technology to improve communication and quality influence your decision to hire them? And 96% of the people that responded said yes it would. In fact, almost two-thirds of them scored it a five out of five in terms of how important it would be. So there's larger breakups in terms of the demographics of you know what age brackets they answered but you know 500 people identified that that's a pretty significant um, important piece for them in making a decision. And this matters now not in five years and the reason I say that is you guys are looking at you know trends in the industry um, you're seeing robotic devices, you're seeing smart interconnected devices. Um, there's lots of different tools that are coming into the marketplace. So certainly janitorial is not the most tech savvy industry, um, but we're starting to see the waves of technology washing upon our shores very fast. So those who can adopt technology to enhance their business now Obviously, there's some challenges in going through that process, but there's challenges if you wait five years, and it's not necessarily how to in inject technology into your company and the processes that go along with it. It's that you will be behind the curve in terms of all the other people who have and have redefined what the customer expectations are. Again, quick synopsis here is that the, the influences of technology and the interconnected nature that we live in within this global world of an expanding cohort of younger buyers is changing their expectations of you, how you have to connect with them, how you have to sell them, how you have to convince them that you are the kind of company that can provide solutions for them is meaningful and they do need to be addressed. So one of the pieces that we kind of speak really high about or not necessarily you know high about ourselves but that we thought was so uh, powerful about what we were doing was the results that we had when we were talking with customers so I want to I want to kind of share that with you so a couple of things that we did to define uh, or redefine ourselves and what the customers expected in this marketplace were really a couple of small things first was we really tried to downplay the value on an existing relationship. So by that I mean I'm, I'm not saying that relationships don't matter, they certainly do, but because uh, tone, my, my son or daughter plays on the same soccer team with you know someone else's son or daughter and he's, my, he, he's a potential customer, I, I shouldn't leverage that relationship and expect the business. What's more probable is that the person on the other end is going to leverage that relationship to try and get me to drop my price. And we've encountered that a number of times and we really just said we're, we're not doing that anymore. We're going to let our, our service and solution stand on their own. If there's a relationship, that's awesome, but that is certainly not going to play into our sales methodology whatsoever. The second piece that we did was we really took a fine look at ourselves and said what are we going into? Like what is our pitch when we go and meet a client and we really rounded that out 
And then we said, okay, now, how does that compare with every other pitch that they get? So we asked our customers, we asked our, our ex customers, we asked potential customers, and you know what? We found out that all of us, all of our competitors were saying the same things that we were. So what, the, and I'll boil it down to just a couple of key words. We would all go in and say, hey, listen, Miss Customer, we're the best company in the city. We focus on quality, we are trusted, and we use green products. We are, you cannot go wrong hiring us. And you know what? That sounds great, except for the fact that the person that they're firing probably said the same thing a year ago as well. So we wanted to have something different. So we have a technology that we have that's different. Why don't we try and incorporate that into our sales pitch? So what we ended up doing, rather than going in and saying that particular kind of pitch, we instead went into that same client and said, listen, ma'am or sir, I, thanks for your time. I know you're going to be meeting with others. I know you, you've said you're getting two or three proposals. Um, do you mind, rather than me telling you how great we are and all the same stuff that the other two or three people are going to walk in and tell you, rather than that, what I'd like to do, with your permission, is maybe spend 15 minutes and show you tools that we use that make us a better managed company and how we provide a, an exemplary level of support to our team, both in the field at the supervisor level, at the cleaner level, and I'd like to show how all that works and what the outputs of that will be in terms of giving you a better service at, 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 a, at a really reasonable cost. And I didn't say we're going to be the lowest cost, reasonable cost. It's all about keeping that client on for as long as possible and, and giving them comfort that they don't have to hire another company a year from now based on hiring, based them selecting you from the same pitch that everyone else had. So kind of to close up here on this particular part of the presentation, there's a couple of, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this company, uh, but I'd like to introduce you to Managed by Q. So if you haven't heard of them, you should look them up. Obviously, Google will be a very good resource for you. So they have a ton of press over the last year. And what you see on the screen here is just a snapshot of their website. So the insights that we just shared with you about you know, the technology that you can utilize, the communication is key, and that the demographic of people who are ultimately buying or influencing the decision to select you as their service provider, they're getting younger. Those insights aren't unique to us. We, we thought they were, but what we've identified is that we're not the only people in the industry who had had that insight. So Managed by Q believe the same thing, but there's a big difference. Managed by Q is a service provider, so they are a building service contractor. They've grown from one to four locations in the last year, and expansion plans in the near future. So they've raised just under $50 million in 18 months. So think of that. The competition is raised $50 million. And they're developing technology in teams across the U.S. And they make no bones about it that they seek to disrupt the industry in a very significant way. And they're not talking about taking out uh, the mom and pop shops. They certainly believe they will. But they're looking to take out some of the bigger players in the space as well. So they put iPads into every customer's office so that the service delivery is transparent to the client and it makes their team more accessible. So moreover, they pay above minimum wage, they include health plans, they offer paid vacation, wage increases every six months, and a plethora of other benefits that they offer. So the reason I share this is that while the philosophy that we have is shared with what Managed by Q has, they're betting against the industry, and our tools, we're trying to bet on the industry. So effectively, um, you know, that's kind of the pivot point in terms of, you know, we're not the only people who have these insights. There's Your competitors have them as well. So that said, what I'd like to do now is kind of, I'm going to cascade from the slide deck, and I'll get in and show you a little bit about the technology. And then after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a... Um, I'm going to show you a couple of things in terms of value add that I think you'll see as being useful. And then I have a, an offer to make to everyone on here as well. So bear with me while I pull this up. I've got to find the right window here, of course. Where is it? Okay, well, I'm going to build a new one. Didn't start on me. So bear with me one second, folks. I'll just tee this up.
There we go. Log in. All right, so here we go. My apologies for the delay. So I wanted to give you, obviously, the insights we believe are valuable to you. Um, you can you kind of leverage those on your own. Um, I want to show you the approach that we've taken in terms of those, those insights. So what you see on the screen here is our application. On the right-hand side is the web-based product. It all ties together, so it is one product. Um, and what we have over on this side is a view of my iPhone. So what I'm going to show you really quick is you can bring into this product all of your supplies. So all the supplies you use across all of the properties that you clean. All of the cleaners that you have on your staff. All of the people at the customer's locations that you tend to communicate with. Here are all the locations that you service. And each of these have a bunch of different buttons. And what I'm going to do is simply dive into one of them. I can see over the past two weeks how many cleanings have taken place, as well as any problems that were reported by my team when they were on shift working. I can see the physical attributes of the building, the street address, etc., as well as security details, how to physically get into the building. I can see the schedule of this location. So for example, what I may do is today I'm going to go and change this shift for Jane. I'm going to remove Jane from this shift. I'm going to say only this event. And then I can see all of the events that are, all the scheduled items that are coming back. So what I'll do is I'll touch on that in just a minute. But I'm going to go back to the location. So I go to the library. The schedule was where we left off. What I can also do is show the end. So for example, before I do this, you just notice that something came up here. As the shift changes for a cleaner, you can see that they're notified when they're late for a shift as well as when their calendar changes. That happens instantaneously. So back over in the mobile or the web product, when we're out selling your customers on the services that you provide, one of the things we did was ask, show us the problem area where your current provider is lacking. And we'd take a photograph and tell the customer that this is going to be central to the instruction that we provide to our team on day one and in two years from now if they're still a client. So it's a very easy word editor. The cleaners have the ability to check in and do their timekeeping through the smartphone as well as through other utilities that I'll speak about in a minute. So this is the library and what I've done is draw a geofence around it so it's basically just a box and if a cleaner signs in for a shift and they're not in that box I can get notified of it. We also have the ability for cleaners to simply log in or go to the front desk phone. As long as this is the phone number they're calling from, we know that they are at the library and they enter a four-digit PIN code to start and conclude their shift. I can allocate which cleaners are allowed to see this location in their smartphone app. Which customers are at this location? Which products we use at this location? And I have some messaging or some alerting functionality. So for example, when a cleaner signs in and they're not in that geofence, send a text message to my cell phone. Cleaners are allowed to notify us that they are out of or running low on particular products on site. It doesn't order it for them, but it lets the supervisors know that they're running low or are completely out of a product on site. And last and not least of which in this utility is a message board so for example, I could say library will be closed today. Reply to confirm. And that alert will go out to all of the cleaners that I had shown on that location. So as you can see, this particular cleaner is on that location and just got that new message. So this is the smartphone app for the cleaner. I can see the messages that have come in by location. There is the message and I can reply and say okay. That then notifies everyone back at the office. As you can see there's the message here. Okay. 
what I'm going to do is go back to the smartphone. I'm going to go all the way to the home page. I can also see my schedule has some alerts. I can see I'm currently late for a shift. So when a cleaner is late, they're notified as are management. And I also have two new unread updates telling me that I have a new updated shift. I'm going to go back to the home screen. So as a cleaner, maybe the story I, I like to tell is maybe I'm a cleaner who's on, a senior cleaner. I've been with the company for a while. I'm being asked to go clean a location I'm not familiar with. How do I accomplish that? This is how using our smartphone app. So I go to locations. I'm going to go to the library. I'm currently signed into the library, but what I'm going to do is sign out to show you that this is the place where a cleaner can notify you that there is a problem. I'm simply going to sign out and what I'm going to do is sign in again. And I will get two text messages that pop up here. There's one and the second one should be coming. There it is. And you can see over here I got two new alerts that notify me that Jane is not signing in to she's supposed to be at. So if I look at the details of this I can see the physical attributes of where the location is versus the location that she's signing in at. And I'm in this building right here. Okay, so back over on the smartphone, I'm going to close those text alerts. So I'm signed into the building. I need to know how to physically enter the building. I hit security. I have my own four digit pin code that allows me access to the security details of this particular location. As I enter the building, I need to know how to clean it. I can hit instructions. And there's all the cleaning instructions inclusive of the imagery that was so important to the customer. And I have the ability by hitting translate to translate this off into a number of different languages. Currently we have it at five only because it's just an, a user interface or user experience. Soon we're going to be building out, uh, we, we utilize Google, Google Translate today. It's going to allow the cleaner access to any of the 60 plus languages that Google Translate allows. In fact, we're going to be providing on the messages here the ability for a supervisor to post a message, for example, in English, and a cleaner who speaks Cantonese and another who speaks Spanish will see that English message translated into their native tongue in real time. And when they reply in their native language, both of those responses will show up in the English supervisor's kind of message screen in English. Okay? Last piece of this particular utility for the cleaner is that as they are running through the facility, maybe I run, I'm running low on something. So I can see that there are two products that have already been ordered. I'm going to put in an order for rubber gloves as well. And you'll notice that I get a new message over here notifying me that there is a new supply request. Okay, so I'm going to sign out of this. I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the manager console. Okay, but before I do, I'm going to show you a couple of other things as it pertains to the cleaner. So the schedule. I can see the entire schedule here. I can see when cleaners are, you know, when there's nowhere where someone is not scheduled to work. I can look at an individual cleaner's schedule. I can add shifts, identify which location I'm going to add it to. I can see the full calendar here. Um, I have to select all the locations if I want to see where everyone is or what locations we're going to this evening. There they are. Okay. And I also have the ability to generate from my check-in and check-out information of my cleaners payroll information. So for example, thus far this month, what I can see is that I have two shifts that I haven't yet confirmed. So this is a two hour shift. This cleaner worked 42 hours. I'm not paying for 42 hours. I'm going to pay for two hours because it's evident that the cleaner forgot to sign out. And I will confirm that. And this I can download into CSV, which will be an Excel format that you can manipulate and enter into your timekeeping. We are working on right now an export into QuickBooks as well. So I'll go back over to the smartphone. I'll show you a couple of features that you management and your supervisors would work with. So first is that you probably live and breathe by your alerts at the top. I can see off-site sign-in details at the top. So Jane signed in when she wasn't on site. 
I can see where the location was and where she signed in. She was 0 .19 one mile, one nine miles away from her location. I can also see that Jane didn't sign into a scheduled shift. I can click on this and see Jane didn't sign into a shift at 4 o'clock today. So next to Jane's name, I hit View, and I'm brought right to her profile. I can see she signed in at the library. I'm going to give her a call and talk to her and see what's going on. Okay, I'm going to go back to the home screen. I can also see that there are alerts next to the schedules. Schedules by location shows me that someone didn't show up at Spirit Spa. I'm going to go back to my home screen again. So the messages tool, I'll just kind of hover around these. I'll show you some of them and not others because I've already shown them. The messages is the same message board that the cleaners have access to. The schedules I just showed you. Clients I will show you in a moment, but from a different window. This would show you all of the people that you communicate with. Similar to the look at the cleaners. This is the cleaners button. All of my cleaners. And what we would do is ask a customer, for example, ma'am or sir, do you believe that, you know, as a cleaning company, we're going to be on site with you when you're not in the office and sometimes we send our cleaners without a supervisor, per se? So do you believe that it's important for us to understand when our cleaners are physically on site at your location? And they would say yes. So what we would do is open this and say, how are your other providers showing you that they know where their team are at all times? Because I can push this next to Jane Smith and I can see she's physically on site so if she's supposed to be finished at 2 in the morning and she's not is there a problem maybe I should phone her okay so what I'm going to do as a supervisor I need to make sure my crew have all the materials that they need I want to provide that to them and I'm going to go on site and visit them I'm going to make sure that I have cleaners on site before I do an inspection I'm going to do all that from the phone so from supplies I see supplies by location I can see the library. I can see which products are outstanding. I mark them complete. They're done. They're off of the system. They are removed. I can go back and I'm going to go to a location. So I hit locations. I can see which locations have cleaners currently working. So I hit the library. I've got multiple cleaners. I can see I've got two people currently working there. I go back a screen. I'm going to call the customer, make sure he can meet me for lunch, maybe after my inspection. So Larry is the CEO. I'm going to call him, see if he'll meet me for a bite to eat. I'm going to, I have the same utilities that the cleaners do, but I also have the ability to do an inspection. I can have multiple inspections per location. We have templates, all that kind of stuff. It's entirely up to you to create those. It's not a problem. Here are all the ones that I started that are not yet finished, and here are all the ones that I've done in the past. Okay, so I'm going to start a new one to show you what this looks like. Are the windows and sills clean and streak free? Sure they are. They look great. How about the carpet? It is below standards. And what I'm going to do is add a comment here because I want to attach a photograph from the camera. There is a photograph. Use that one. I could attach multiple if I wanted to. I'm going to add a comment here and just say there's a coffee stain. Helps if I actually type it. done. Save and I can continue through the rest of this and mark this inspection complete. I'll save it and once I do that from within my reports section here I can see all of the cleaning inspections that have been done. Let's say I look across this month how many have we done across what locations. This is the one we just did here. Date, time, who completed it, location. I could download into a PDF and send to a customer, but we want our clients to be able to do that before they leave the site. So back over on the smartphone, I can add a note to the cleaner or to the client. In this case, the client, the person I want to send it to is Adele. I can give her a copy of the report as well as a quick message You know, that would go into an email format. I save that, hit send, and that's an email that goes off to the customer. Okay. Two other quick utilities that I will just quickly show you is we do have a utility for, uh, for the customers to be able to communicate directly to you so they can mark messages urgent, share photographs with you. And a second one that I will showcase very quickly as well is a public survey. So we give you the opportunity to gain feedback from your customer's customer. So think of the washroom 
where you would have a sticker where the public could text or call if there was a service issue, there's water on the floor, no soap in the hand pumps, all by text message or by phone that ends up being a full reporting system that you can then use to go back to that customer and say, we need to be on site more often because the service issues we see on Saturdays happen every three hours. You have us showing up at this location every, every four to five hours. So I'm going to kind of collapse this down and I'm going to get back to the slide presentation because I've got a couple more things I'm going to showcase for you. Before we get into that, are there Okay, so what I'll showcase for you here, um, my coordinates are here and available. Certainly reach out should you so choose. What I will advise is if you do want to see more about our product, uh, a little bit more lengthy conversation perhaps, the protocol that's the easiest for us um, and probably most efficient from your perspective as well, go to our website. Up in the top right corner, there's request a demo. Put that through. Um, and that becomes a mechanism that is easiest for us to kind of make sure we, we don't, you don't fall through the cracks. The second piece is that it also gives you um, an opportunity to just book a meeting with us. So it's a shared calendar on our end that you can access, define the time and the kind of meeting that works best for you, and we can schedule all of that, or sorry, you can schedule all of that without ever having to talk to, to us. Now, before the takeaways, I do have something to ask you to consider. We have entered into the ISSA's Innovation Award this year. Um, our real-time attendance feature that I showcased for you is our entry into uh, that award category. We would love it if you would consider. Um, if you see the other tools that are out there, uh, we would love it if you considered actually placing a vote for us. So what you can do in order to accomplish that is either hit our website, it's right on our main page, or the ISSA's web page would also as well. Okay. So a couple of takeaways. I'll give away some free resources here. Um, so first off, when we were hiring cleaners, we found that we spent an inordinate amount of time trying to identify which of the applications should we actually talk to. If you have 30, 40, 50 people applying for a job, it's very hard to distinguish the difference between cleaner number one and cleaner number 30. So what we did to try and help vet that process was build a system that allows us to say, we have a job, tell us about yourself. And in the back, the system measures how that person compares to the job that we actually have available. So it's a free system, completely free to use. You can find the link to cleaning jobs on our website. It is being used by a couple of hundred companies right now to help them hire, and it is free to use. It's a value add. By all means, it's yours to take advantage of. Secondly, if you ever wonder where do your calls come from, is it Yellow Pages, is it my website, is it my business card, where and why are people calling, there's a couple of utilities that are very easy to use, a little bit of configuration to them, and they're very cheap. So we use them ourselves. We've been using these tools for a number of years. Um, I'll speak a little bit more how to access this in just a minute. And the last one that I'll share with you as well is Facebook ads. I don't think very many people in the room would argue that Facebook ads are not a good thing. The challenge that we would advise is that understanding how to do them and how to measure it is key. And again, one of the founding partners of this company comes from a digital agency. Um, that has significant um, digital marketing experience. And what he has done is taken all of his experience and he has dumped all of these insights into our company blog. So if you're interested in any of those kind of uh, takeaways, hit our blog, browse through. There's bunches of material in there. And it's not just theoretical. There's practical implementation, screenshots of settings to use, text uh, tips. Um, so check out the blog. There's a bunch of different materials in there that could be quite helpful for you. So before I go any further, there's one more slide I do want to check in on, but I'm going to ask if there are any questions currently. I'd love to answer some questions before we go. Okay. Uh, ta -ta. 
how much time does it take to train employees on this and how long does it take before they feel comfortable using all the features? Great question. So the typical turnaround time, obviously it depends on how many locations there are and how many cleaners. Um, what we found, we built the system for the cleaner. So our first cleaner was a 62 year old grandmother who never owned a smartphone nor did she ever want to <laughs> own a smartphone. Uh, but we gave her an iPhone and a two minute YouTube video and said you need to hit the ground running with this. Let us know if it doesn't work for you because we need to redo it. So the piece that is not necessarily the training is certainly important and we do provide that both to supervisors and to cleaners. The biggest catalyst that needs to, or the biggest hurdle that needs to be addressed, rather than training before they feel comfortable using all the features, is from, from a viability perspective, is ensuring that the message on why you're deploying this for the cleaner is, is critical. If you take this to your cleaners and say, we got a new system that's going to monitor when you're on site and not, you're bound to get pushback. It's big brother. Rather, our most successful clients go to their cleaners and they try and get them together and say, guys, we're really excited. We've just bought this technology that is all about you. It's focused on giving you guys better support from us. We know we can't see you guys all the time. We're, no one out, we're not always there with you when you run into questions. This is a tool that's going to give you better access to us and it's going to allow you to share with us what's going on at the customer location so that we can all build a better janitorial company. And that messaging, that inflection is significantly more valuable um, in, in terms of kind of getting people to use the system and adopt it. Um, if you're talking about people using the web-based product, it's really, it's, it's not difficult to use. Um, I'm breezing through it as fast as I can. But we also have, as someone is on the website, there are utilities. If I can find it, where is it gone here? should be a system in here when I log it. There's... Uh, probably just because I'm sharing my screen. But it, the, the, we've got a system that provides video clips on how to do certain things the first time you've entered into the system. Another question is, is there any way an employee can fool the geofence? So the employees can turn off the geolocation services in the phone. So that is certainly something that a cleaner can do. Um, again, what will happen, you will, note, you will notice that they're not physically at the location, so you will get alerts that they're not physically there. So this, again, our utility here is attempting to be uh, more communicative, security focused. There are compliance elements to this that are certainly valuable and important, um, but that is, uh, you know, at, at that level you can't turn, you can have them turn it off. Is cleaningjobs.co work in the U.S.? Yes, it does. Um, the set, the questions are, that are in there are set. Um, we don't allow you to change them. There's a reason for that in terms of HR policies. Um, we don't want us nor you to get sued for any of the questions that are asked. Um, but what we do have in there, again, the intent is not for it to identify this is the cleaner I'm going to hire. The intent is to identify of the 50 or 60 applications I got, these are the five people who want to work at the time that I have available that have expressed interest in being a part-time cleaner rather than a full-time cleaner, which is the position I have available. And from those candidates, then you can go and do your interviews and identify which individual is the best fit for your organization. Are there any other questions that want to come through? Uh, are we limited by the number of accounts we have to use the software? So our pricing structure is, and I'll get to that in just a second, that's a really good question, I'll showcase that in a second. Um, our pricing structure is based on the number of locations that you service, not the number of people that you have in your business. As a communication uh, tool, we want to make sure that you don't limit the application of this based on how many people you have. So what we've done is we've priced it based on the number of locations that you have. So any other final opportunity for question here? Okay. So what I